Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching and welcome to the English news of Bing Phuc Radio Television Station and Newspaper. I'm with you with the latest news for today. Charity app raises funds for households in need. Jingtang Town recognizes students amid two military schools. Top leader tries party conquest was announced at committee meeting. Vietnamese Prime Minister holds phone talks with Thailand counterpart. Coconut export forecast to hit $1 billion US dollar this year. And now other details. The Provincial Red Cross Society has developed a charity app to mobilize support for those in extreme hardship from residents and benefactors both within and beyond the province. Since its launch, the app has successfully raised 595 million Vietnam dong to support 123 cases in need across the province. The funds, managed by the app's team and the Provincial Red Cross Society, have been directly delivered to each beneficiary. The app operates on principles of transparency and accountability, offering a publicly accessible reporting channel that details the use of donations for each specific case. This transparent approach has gained growing trust and widespread community support. The Jung Teng Tao military command recently held a meeting to congratulate and encourage students accepted into military academies and universities for the 2024 academic year. This year, 17 students from Chen Tang qualified to apply for military academies, with seven gaining acceptance, four to the military office school number two, one to the military engineering officer school, one to the military technical academy, and one to the logistics academy. Accordingly, four members of the local militia and self-defense forces were accepted into universities and colleges specializing in military affairs. During the meeting, Leadership of the Chen Tang Tao Military Command presented gifts and commended the students for their hard work and dedication. They also urged the students to continue excelling in their studies and training, strictly adhere to the state laws, military discipline and school regulations, and be prepared to take on any duties assigned by the party, state and army. As the National Day approaches, streets across residential areas in the province have been cleaned and decorated creating a welcoming atmosphere for the upcoming holiday. From village lanes to urban streets, residents have come together to clean and decorate their neighborhoods with national flags and colorful flowers, proudly marking Independence Day. A 300-meter-long, 800-meter-wide alley in Tân Phu Wat, Dong Suai City, now gleams with red flags in honor of the holiday. In Tang An Commune, Hun Quan District, an 800-meter-long flower line road, beginning with a grand arch of blooming pink flowers, stands out as a highlight. This road is one of eight flower line streets planted by local residents over the past three years, featuring more than 10 varieties of flowers that bloom year-round. On September 2nd, these trees become even more vibrant with the addition of national flags. I encouraged local women to collect flower seeds from various places and plant them. Now, we have these beautiful flower-lined streets to celebrate the National Day. As the Independence Day approaches, these vibrant community spaces further ignite a deep sense of patriotism across all levels of society. Party General Secretary and State President Tô Lâm chaired a meeting on August 29 of the Personnel Subcommittee of the 14th National Party Congress and the Sitting Committee for the Personnel Planning of the 14th Party Center Committee, its Politburo and its Secretariat for the 2026-2031 tenure. At the meeting, Party General Secretary and President Tô Lâm highlighted the critical importance of personnel selection for each party congress. He emphasized that cadre work is a key element of party building and a vital link in the party's overall operations. He stressed the need for careful and thorough preparation in selecting personnel. He said those chosen must be truly exemplary, possessing the necessary courage, integrity, intelligence, leadership skills, and professional expertise. They must also have the trust of both the people and the party to handle strategic tasks. 
The selected individuals must be capable and trustworthy enough to lead the country into its next phase of development. He added members of the subcommittee must continue to work with urgency and the highest level of responsibility to effectively address the difficult, complex, and sensitive, yet crucial, tasks at hand. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính held phone talks with his Thai counterpart Beitong Tan Shinawat on August 29. More details are coming up next. The Vietnamese government leader congratulated Peiting Tarn on being endorsed as the prime minister by the king of Thailand. He affirmed Vietnam's consistent foreign policy of treasuring and wishing to strongly develop the Vietnam-Thailand relations in a more reliable and practical manner. For her part, Prime Minister Peiting Tarn congratulated Vietnam on the 79th anniversary of its national day. She thanked Prime Minister Chin for sending a letter and making a phone call to congratulate her when she assumed the position of Prime Minister. She emphasized that Vietnam is a close neighbor and an important partner of Thailand in the region, highly evaluated Vietnam's socioeconomic development achievements, affirmed her willingness to cooperate with the Vietnamese Prime Minister to enhance comprehensive and effective cooperation between the two countries for the benefit of the people of the two countries, for peace and stability in the region. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính on August 29 attended the inauguration ceremony of the 500 kW light circuitry in Hung In Province. The 519 km line connecting Quang Trek in Quang Binh Province to Phur Noi in Hung Yen Province has an investment capital of over $896.8 million and consists of four sections. These projects are critical and urgent for power transmission playing a vital role in boosting transmission capacity through the 500 kV system from central to northern Vietnam, doubling the capacity to 5,000 MW. They will enhance power system stability, increase electricity supply to the north by 2025 and beyond, and reduce the risk of overload and congestion in existing 500 kV lines and stations, thereby contributing to national energy security. Prime Minister Pham Min Chin told the project's inauguration ceremony that the transmission line holds special significance in many aspects of economics, politics, society, national defense and security. The project has a strategic meaning in ensuring national energy security, easing the power shortage in the north. It ensures sufficient electricity supply to foreign businesses and investors especially in the high-tech sector, assuring them that Vietnam is determined to turn commitments into specific, measurable, and quantifiable results, stated the government leader. The Vietnam Coconut Association has forecast that coconut exports will hit $1 billion US dollar this year, driven by the signing of a protocol for the official export of fresh coconuts to China. Earlier this month, Vietnam and China signed three protocols on the official export of frozen durian, fresh coconuts and crocodile to China, which are expected to significantly boost exports of these farm products. China's opening the door for fresh coconut will bring significant opportunities for Vietnam's coconut growers. With a population of 1.4 billion, China is a huge consumption market, while its domestic coconut supply only meets around 10% of the demand. This is good news for coconut growers, as opening up the Chinese market will develop a stable consumption market for coconuts and avoid falling prices. The Vietnam Fruit and Vegetable Association expects the export of fresh coconut to increase by around 200 to 300 million US dollars by the end of the year and continue to grow significantly in the near future. Vietnam is currently the seventh largest coconut producer in the world with a total growing area of 188,000 hectares and an output of around 2 million tons per year. That's all for today on our new shopping food radio television station and newspaper. Once again, thanks for watching and goodbye for now.